Imagine that this cup is worth 50 euros. But that is a story for another day because today I have a story for you about nothing other than Dragon Ball Z or specifically Son Goku and actually kind of the whole culture of Dragon Ball Z. Uh, you wonder why? And that's obviously because I was as inspired by the Dragon Ball Z saga as a lot of other people of my age when Dragon Ball Z was relevant. I guess it still kind of is, but you know, it was like hype, hype, hype. We would used to run uh, back then, you know, internet was not around as or not as much, and so we were relying on TV. And uh, Dragon Ball Z was shown on Lithuanian television uh, when some of us that were still in school. So some kids would, it was like a big thing, they would even say it on TV that a lot of kids actually ran away from school just to watch Dragon Ball Z on TV. And myself, I remember. I was hanging out with these group of friends, kind of like this peaceful gang of hip hop hip hopsters. And uh, as soon as the clock would hit, everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, Dragon Ball Z is like in 50 minutes!" And we would all run away, and all, all like two or three people would be would stay, and they're like, "I hate Dragon Ball Z," you know. So it was a big thing. I guess whoever watched it, you know what I'm talking about. And I think not only to myself, but also a bunch of other people where inspired by and touched by that narrative and story as well. And personally, which I have a feeling, and now let's do this. Let me know in the comments if you were like that too. Uh, if you trained more or wanted to learn martial arts because of Dragon Ball Z. So myself, um, I always liked martial arts. I didn't necessarily practice martial arts because of Dragon Ball Z, but the desire to train like hell, to become the strongest, was definitely impacted at least to a big degree by Dragon Ball Z. And uh, that's actually kind of what the story is going to be about. And as you know, the title, which actually led me to some trouble as well, to overtraining and suffering injuries because of Dragon Ball Z. I'm not going to sue them. I'm not going to do a lawsuit, but, <laughs> but I think it's a valuable story for me to share. And you know, this is lessons I learned the hard way uh, episode list which uh, where I share something I experienced in my life which gave me some wisdom and uh, through impactful stories. And this is one of them. I hope that what I learned through it, you will be able to apply to your life. So it's kind of funny as it sounds, but I think, you know, it's legit. So the story is like this. Uh, I was into Dragon Ball Z and my favorite character was, I actually always liked Piccolo. It's too bad that he kind of became a minor character as time passed. It was always cool, but you know, they give, didn't give him more power-ups after a certain point. Uh, but then I also loved Sengoku. Interestingly enough, initially when I watched Dragon Ball, before Z, when Sengoku was young, he was meditating, he was learning meditation in uh, one of the episodes when he was in the Tower of the God, Kami. And uh, that actually, I was like, I don't know, like, seven, eight, well, max 10 years old. And I was like, this is interesting. And I started meditating. I think the first meditation I did in my life might have been because I watched Dragon Ball. It's pretty cool to consider. Uh, but then obviously they get older and they train and train and train and they train with a lot of weights, extra weights, additional weights. You know, Goku walks around with weights and the West and everything. And I thought I should do that too. I wonder, again, let me know in the comments if you did that too. I have a feeling there's more of us. So I bought weights, like ankle weights, like five kilos on both feet, on both legs. Then hand weights, I bought like four. So on each you know, hand, I would put a couple. Uh, I bought a whole West of like 10 kilograms and I would just like take weights as well and or, or put stuff in my backpack and I would do the weight training, like running around like crazy, kicking and punching because of Dragon Ball Z. Now, the thing is, uh, and why I wanted to make this video is because it wasn't smart. And it was cool that Dragon Ball Z inspired me to get on with it and do it. But uh, I got injured because of that. And not, not only actually because of that, and that's something too I wanted to tell you in this story is 
Uh, those were also the days when I was already training Aikido in my hometown. I mean, where I grew up, uh, called the city called Panimajis. That was the first Aikido school I went to, and the instructor there... I always try to not talk too much about other people, but sometimes you just can't avoid saying certain things. And uh, the, f the thing was that my first Aikido instructor, he was kind of supportive towards that radical type of extreme training. He loved Kyokushin Karate, which is a hard style of karate, Oyama Masatatsu, who was a Korean actually. He lived like in the mountains for like, I think about a half a year, just training every day, breaking rocks with his bare fists, fighting bulls and cutting off bulls. And he was like extreme level of training, ways of training. And my first like, you know, instructor, he was hyped about that. And the whole Kyokushin Karate culture, which, especially in the old school one, which he was hyped about, um, it was a lot about, you know, carrying each other on top of your shoulders and punching each other in the stomachs, running on top of each other's abs and stuff like that, doing hyper flexibility stretching. And uh, so combine those two. The culture that was there in my first Aikido school that I trained at and Dragon Ball Z, I was all about that. And part of me wishes that my first Aikido instructor would have been more wise in that regard or that I had some better teachers around or knowledgeable people. But also, too, you need to recognize, you know, it was not the age of internet yet. The internet was still just kind of becoming a thing. And now we can easily go online and see how correct ways to train, the science behind it, then we all only kind of, we all knew kind of things from hearsay. So nobody around me was talking about joint health, you know, healthy flexibility, mobility. And uh, I was like 15 or 16 training, you know, like badass with extra weights and whatnot. And uh, it started to feel slowly, like my knees started to give in, I had knee problems. That's a lot of it because of Aikido, because in Aikido, uh, I know a lot of people in general Aikido have knee problems because they're sitting on the knees and there's turning movements on the feet which actually impact the knees. But also too, my Aikido instructor, he would, uh, first Aikido instructor, he would, uh, I was the big guy already, but my, my friends were also pretty big, in Lithuania we were quite big. We tend to be quite big. And he would put us on top of each other's shoulders, like in pairs, and you would either do squats, which is already you know, not healthy for your knees, but also we would do these Aikido turns, which uh, actually just, you know, I don't know if the camera will catch it, but let's, let's give it a shot. So we would do these Aikido turns. This is the stance and we would turn, you know, like this, boom, boom. And then the thing is, one of my schools that I trained in told me later, pick up your feet, because if you're turning and putting pressure on the feet, that also applies pressure on the knee, and I would feel it because my knees were bad. And also we would do the stupid samurai Japanese thing where we would slide, you know, you turn and you slide, you slide legs, and there's always pressure on the knees, and not enough of that, if that was not enough, we'd also put each other on top of the shoulders, like I'd have a guy, my friend, like, you know, an 80 kilos guy on my shoulders, and then I would do these twists, and no surprise, my first Aikido like, instructor is quite badly injured all over the place. You know, I, think, I think he can't really train anymore from what I know because of all the injuries. It's too bad, you know, he kind of put us on, onto it as well, and we did the same, and I suffered the consequences, and uh, yeah. So I had a knee surgery, my, I always forget which knee was it, I, my both knees were bad, I still do feel that impact, but I have like a, okay, it's, it's the left knee. I uh, had a meniscus surgery, uh, that was, but that was like when I was 22, when I just opened my Aikido school, actually a funny story for another day. And uh, my back, I still have problems with that. Uh, luckily I started doing yoga later on, and um, uh, I kind of stretched out my body and started fixing a lot of things because, again, when I was like 18 or 19, I had constant back pain, knee pain, shoulder pain, like, my body, I felt like an old man. And I think, well, part of it is because of the Aikido culture that I trained in as my first Aikido school. 
but also because of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> and that's the point of the video, and that's what I wanted to say is, I hope that times have changed. You know, now with the internet being around that people are smarter and they test, they, they investigate and read about stuff before they do it. Part of me is concerned not everyone does it yet, especially younger kids. In general, questioning and the ability to use critical mind and to ask yourself, how do I know that this is smart? How do I know that this works? A lot of people are lacking that and I wish this kind of channel is one of the things about this channel is I want to inspire people to do that. You know, it's cool to get inspired, let's say from Daniel Ball Z, to want to become the best, to want to become the strongest, you know, to, to train more, but you also have to consider how you're doing it and you have to do it in a smart way. Whatever, a rare anime guy who's creating that anime will investigate into the science of training, you know, to make it legit. So, so be careful about that, you know, question things. That's why I say at the end of each episode, keep questioning. Never take things for granted. Always ask how you know what you know. Why do you think it's true? So yeah, so I fucked up my body because of, partly because of Dragon Ball Z and I wanted to share the story because not only in Dragon Ball Z, but in, in different animes, you know, you see guys doing this and that and some crazy, stupid training. I guess it's self-evident to not do that, but who knows? Just in case I wanted to share the story so you wouldn't do the same mistake. Uh, but yeah, so I'm about to finish the video, but just uh, to wrap up, because I'm pretty sure if you press this episode, there's a big chance you are a Dragon Ball Z fan and you're sharing that. And uh, let me know who was your favorite character in the comments. But I also thought I'll share, you know, a little bit about uh, why uh, Goku inspired me. And that was because of his kind of purity. It's, he still does. Actually, he still inspires me. Not as much as in the day, but you know, I consider there's certain characters in my life, like fictional characters. Obviously, Batman. <laughs> uh, also, Roni Kenshin. Uh, v for Vendetta. V for, but actually, more the graphic novel. Graphic novel is back there. I have it. Uh, but also Goku, uh, they, I, I feel like those fictional characters inspired certain qualities in me. I, I, I admit that part, part of why I am how I am is because of those characters. Although they are fictional, they're still kind of representing certain qualities and, and attitudes. And, and I really always love Goku because, you know, I guess we all love him because of that. You know, he's naivete, he's pureness, he's always eager. He, he represents to me that you shouldn't give up uh, obviously, you shouldn't give up in, in general. That's his kind of approach. But but he's never he never feels down if he meets a challenge. And I think that's kind of how we should be. You know, actually, I have this cup here. I need to at least use it once. Costs it's worth fifty euro. <laughs> so we should never like if we are faced with a big challenge. Usually. We tend to get scared and have doubts. Not to say that doesn't happen to me either, but that attitude is so admirable that if you get overwhelmed by a challenge, you don't shy away from it, but you do the opposite. You run towards it. You know, you, you not like don't jump, you know, into teeth of a tiger, but but in general, especially in social situations, like if there's a challenge. Don't be intimidated by it, but grow up for it. And I think that's what Dragon Ball Z really represented well, and that's what Goku is all about. It's about being inspired by challenge, wanting more challenge, because understanding that it grows you and makes you better. So always love that. And he's not, I mean, I guess, yeah, I think that, that says it. So I think that's it, you know. A bit shorter than usual, but it's a funny story. It's a fun story. I thought I'll share it with you and remember the good old days. And I'm sure many of you do that too. And so just uh, again, let's have a chat. You now let's, let's talk about this in uh, downstairs in the comments. I will tell you more about other characters, which highly influenced my life. Uh, again, part of my attitude does come a bit from Son Goku, but what characters were most influential in your life? What's your favorite Dragon Ball Z character? And did you do stupid fu fucking shit because of the anime yourself? I bet you did. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. I will jump in and I'll be there and I'll respond to every 
comment, especially before this channel is not like 1 million followers and I can't literally do that. But until then, I'll be so happy to get those comments and you know, let's chat. Let's get to know each other. So thank you for listening to this crazy fun story. And we always keep questioning. <laughs>